Well, it's um interesting video for me. It's three in the morning. Um, I've woken up not feeling the best and I was having a dream, interesting dream about being on the steps of Parliament, speaking to the children of Australia, I suppose, about um, the uh, big protest that's coming up for uh, to stop carbon pollution. And um, I've just, uh, if those that know me, I just had a heart attack a few days ago, so um, I'm sort of recovering and and uh, it's interesting, I was thinking about the concept that we would um, stop carbon emissions in Australia and, and I was having all these great dreams about this fabulous speech where I talked about everything I've learned about um, carbon trading and and uh, the environment and things like that and I just thought I'd just say it all. <laughs> Whether or not it comes out clean and tidy, I don't know, but I, I had a heart attack um, on Sunday and... Uh, we started driving to the hospital and uh, what well, didn't didn't do very well so an ambulance came and picked me up and took me to a lovely warm hospital where um, you know the, the hospital was heated and, and uh, all sorts of uh, um, people worked on me and, and managed to keep me alive quite comfortably and they didn't even consider what well, obviously in heart attacks are uh, something to consider but they didn't consider so much that um, it was a major operation they got over and done with in no time at all putting things inside my heart to open up some some um, some uh, areas of the heart that are blocked up and uh, that saved my life and um, I'm still feeling a bit worse for wear for it and I was thinking about the whole concept that uh, tomorrow um, and whether I upload this or not I don't know but tomorrow um, all the children of Australia will be leaving school for the day and protesting about carbon emissions in Australia and calling carbon pollution and carbon's not pollution. I wanted to talk about what I've learned and what I'd like to, the children to learn is that you know carbon isn't pollution, carbon's the lifeblood of the planet and uh, and I'll explain that. I'm sitting here, it's quite cold and I'm wearing this most bizarre thing I found in the, in the, it was dark and I grabbed something out and it's cold this morning and the reason it'll be warm this afternoon I'll be in tank top and thongs is that the sun heats the earth and um, <clears throat> it's interesting that when they talk about global warming and then they change it to climate change, um, that you know warming generally as a planet has slowed, if not stalled for the last 10 or 15 years, um, whether or not kids should be... It's, I'm a bit, I suppose I'm going to catch 22. I'm really proud that our children are going to stand up and, and um, um, stand united for some change, but I'm a bit perturbed that maybe they're not being taught or they're not being open-minded to learn about the things that could save the planet or what carbon dioxide really is. And uh, I, I'm worried that they're um, being told to do something rather than learning about something themselves. You see, carbon dioxide is a lifeblood of the planet and, and uh, without carbon dioxide, we're kind of in a bit of trouble. And I'm an environmentalist like the kids, um, I hope, are protesting tomorrow are environmentalists as well. But... Um, the difference between myself and what the kids are being taught is that I think that we should have more carbon dioxide. Um, but if we sat down together as environmentalists versus me, I suppose, and what am I, uh, a denier? A denier, I think I'm a denier, and uh, I don't know what that really means. I don't deny anything, and I don't believe the science is settled. I don't think science ever is. When I went to hospital first time with a heart problem 10 years ago, compared to now, things have changed. So. I'm really glad I didn't say the science was settled when it came to um, the medical support that I got in hospital and I'm, I'm glad that it wasn't 200 years ago where I probably would have died and they wouldn't have had any way of fixing it. I'm glad I didn't say back then the science is settled, if you get a heart attack you die and there's no use doing anything about it. And the same applies to carbon dioxide. Um, you know, the science isn't settled as to what drives the heat and if we go back um, in our history to um, the Jurassic period, um, the carbon dioxide was nearly 2,000 parts per million. And I always think to myself when people talk about global warming um, and lowering CO2 emissions as to what exactly they want to lower them to. And it's interesting, the planetary, if you look at the history, and I, I'm not telling the kids that are watching this if they happen to watch this and I happen to upload it, um, to believe me, um, I don't want them to believe me, I don't want them to believe their teachers, I want them to 
um, investigate, and that's what education should be about, um, learning yourselves what's happening. And if you go back to Jurassic period, um, parts per million were 2,000 parts per million, and um, there were lots of plants, <laughs> more plant life than there is now, and there was life, including human life, um, to some degree. So we survived um, when it was much higher. And one of the things that you'll notice if you look at um, time frames, if you kids were to hold your hands as far apart as you can, and that was the history of the earth, um, the times they're talking about in the last 100 or 200 years would be a, a, a pinprick um, in the millions of years the earth's been here. And uh, com emissions go up, temperatures go up. I mean, obviously temperatures of the earth generally are dictated by the sun. And uh, there's been, there's two lines of thought with carbon training or carbon dioxide um, emissions is one is that um, if the emissions rise, um, then temperatures rise. The other um, argument is that as temperatures rise, emissions rise. So um, is it carbon dioxide pushing the heat and temperatures or is it the temperatures pushing the emissions of carbon? Um, that's a very debatable issue the science isn't in and lots of people are arguing that and generally we were going through just prior to the 1800s, 1700s we were going through a, a cold time and uh, um, during those cold times um, the oceans take up carbon dioxide and when it's warmer they emit carbon dioxide in the same way that volcanoes emit carbon dioxide and humans were cutting trees down to build houses and we were burning wood <laughs> to keep warm the same in my house here, it's a bit cold this morning, I don't have electric heating and I use dead wood to burn in my fire to keep me warm. And the emissions of that burning of that fuel um, includes carbon dioxide which then goes out into my forests and uh, around my property and the trees take that up. In fact farmers out this way still now, hundreds of years later, will burn um, uh, off um, uh, vegetable matter or trees and plant matter and generally try and make it uh, smolder and then that goes across the paddocks and that helps the, the plant life grow. So um, when we talk about carbon dioxide we talk about how much at any one time we should have and um, what the benefits are. So anyway um, to get to basics of it the more CO2 we sorry the more um, CO2 we emit that helps plant life. Plant life helps us live because obviously Plants take in carbon dioxide and put off oxygen based um, emissions, and we breathe in the oxygen and we breathe out carbon dioxide. Um, <clears throat> when we talk about wanting to lower emissions, it's interesting that we only target energy production, um, and energy production is not by any means the highest emissions. Um, volcanoes going off, not just in the sky, but in the, in the, in the oceans, put out carbon dioxide. Um, we're breathing out carbon dioxide every day. When you get up in the morning and you power up your computers and your laptops and your, um, your your phones and you turn on the fridge and you turn on the light, everything else like that, that that's that's coming from a source generally in most cases that's powered by um, the burning um, stored or, or, or using a stored energy which it releases carbon dioxide and we all know that so um, you kids when you go into the protest you'll jump in a car and you'll drive there um, and uh, <clears throat> when you get there, you'll use loudspeakers, which are all powered by power. So um, basically speaking, emissions um, uh, across the board, generally vehicles, uh, one of the biggest emissions, and of course, we're not addressing that whatsoever, even though you can go back hundreds of years and, and uh, you know, a couple of hundred years, and they were starting to design electric cars back then, and we're not using them now. And so you're being, we're all being misled. I mean, we're not meant to know the whole truth, but it's interesting that um, CO2 emissions, um, I believe they should be higher and, and everyone else wants to reduce them. And if we go back to just 200 years ago, 200 years ago is not long ago, uh, emissions were dropping. Um, we'd just been through a cold time and uh, after a cold period of time, oceans and everything suck up CO2 and the CO2 levels were heading pretty low, about 220 parts per million. Um, <clears throat> if you're not aware, at 150 parts per million, um, it's very dangerous because trees don't grow very well at all and if trees die so do we so you know we were looking at possibly an extinction type scenario if nothing had changed then temperatures started to rise CO2 emissions rose and uh, um, some of that was added to by humans because we 
we cut down wood, which is stored CO2. Um, we weren't replanting, so of course we were clearing land for um, um, growing fruit and veg, and we were clearing land for a variety of purposes, building houses and that sort of thing. We started making things out of concrete, which you know causes major emissions. Um, then we started burning fossil fuels. Um, initially, fossil fuels were to make power so that we can wake up and turn the heater on and uh, <coughs> have a fridge and, and drive a car and so forth. And the emissions got up to, um, at this stage, around 400, 420 parts per million, which really isn't at the best level yet. It really should be at between six and 800 so that the plant life grows. And the, the interesting arguments here is that um, people are telling you that um, because I believe that, that I'm um, um, anti or, or a denier and that you guys out there are, are in a right by saying we should lower emissions. But you see, to lower emissions isn't just about stopping em emissions in Australia, it's about stopping emissions on a worldwide basis. And it's not just about stopping power production, it's about stopping cars and, and all sorts of things. And it's about not charging your phone and not driving to school, but walking to school, riding a push bike to school. You, you see, we, we, we want to have that power, we, we don't, it's power and generation and uh, advanced technologies that brought us out of poverty. And uh, not just bring us out of poverty, but it gave us better life expectancy and better lifestyles. And um, the rest of the world wants those same things that, we, that, that we've, we've come to know. So, um, so you know, um, the kids in other countries want to wake up and be able to put on the TV or put on the power and have a fridge to keep their food good and, and they want to be able to heat their homes and they want, they want all the things that we have. So they're continuing to produce carbon emissions because they're putting in coal-fired plants all over the world. So as we shut one and um, they'll be opening 10 and, uh, or 20 or 30, and so this is a worldwide issue, it's not just Australia, but we can't, there's a couple of things we've got to be considerate of. First of all, all of you guys out there want to charge up your tablets and your phones, and so do I, and uh, so does my wife and so does everybody else. But we can't charge though, uh, we, we, we need base load power, and we don't have that yet. We don't want to wake up on a cold morning and there's been not enough sun and not enough wind and not enough storage of power so we don't have it and we can't turn it on and we don't want our elderly to wake up um, freezing and dying in their homes because they don't have electricity and power to do that so um, <clears throat> we, we've got to think a little bit outside the square um, with, with, with what we demand and how we demand it and if it is the case um, that many scientists are now saying that the emissions of carbon dioxide rise with the temperatures of the earth because of the sun um, then are we heading in the wrong direction? Now, me, as a denier, you might like to call me, would like to see us putting in, planting more trees, going to um, uh, non-carbon-based fuels, um, looking at better storage of um, green energy, um, not just battery storage, but uh, grand schemes like the Snowy Scheme and the Bladfield Schemes and, and schemes that will, will power us into the future without reliance on... Um, <coughs> carbon-based fuels and I think that's really important and that there's we need to take the division out of it which is the carbon dioxide um, division the argument that you guys are saying that carbon dioxide's a pollution I'm saying no it's not it's the lifeblood of the planet um, I think I'm more correct than you that doesn't mean that you standing up is the wrong thing to do it also doesn't mean that um, <coughs> emissions um, shouldn't be lowered if we can try and lower our reliance, but, but whether or not we're driving it is debatable. The science can't be in because we don't want the science to ever be in. We want to continue to move forward. I want to know that my kids and their kids um, will have reliable power, good education systems, and, and that if something happens to them um, and they're not well, they can go to a hospital any time of the day or any time of the year and they're going to have power and reliable power and things like that. So. Um, it's really interesting that some of the things you're not being taught are so important. I mean, first of all, if you go back to the beginning of what they're saying is the Industrial Revolution, where we started emitting all these things, um, the, the, the great people out there, the really brilliant people, didn't want to do that. You had uh, Henry Ford, who was a hemp grower. Most of the 
um, people in America had to grow hemp at the time. Um, and the reason they grew hemp, and, and hemp, by the way, just so you know, is one of the biggest carbon sinks. So if you are really concerned about carbon, we should have a, a lot of hemp industries in Australia. And he was building vehicles at the time, and some of the vehicles were built from hemp resins, which are recyclable, and they were stronger than steel. He was powering all his vehicles on hemp ethanol. So in other words, he wasn't using oil-based um, petroleum-based products or coal or anything else. He was actually growing in his fields most of the products. Uh, and of course, as, he, as, as the carbon-based fuels were burnt, ethanol, um, the carbon was taken back up by the forest. So it, it was a, a sustainable practice. Um, Rudolf Diesel, who invented the diesel engine, <coughs> didn't um, invent a diesel engine to run on um, petroleum-based or, or carbon-based fuels. He was actually using hemp oil. So, you know, the world didn't have to go in the direction it is now, OK? It never did. We could have been um, growing our fuels and hemp cellulose could have been making recyclable plastics. I mean, they knew that 200 years ago, but of course, you know, 100 odd years ago at least, and, and you guys aren't being taught that sort of stuff in your schools as well. So otherwise, what we could be doing is where the forests have been cut down, we could be growing vast forests of, of, or vast plantations of, of hemp, and the hemp will be absorbing the carbon dioxide, if that's your biggest concern, and we could be making um, fuels and plastics and ropes and materials and textiles and buildings and so forth, not using concrete, but using hemp creep. So, there's a lot of things that can change in the world, but I don't know that it's going to really help uh, anyone if you're getting told as students that the science is settled and that we're doomed and that we're doomed because of carbon dioxide um, um, emissions because that is not the case. And I don't want you to listen to me and believe anything I'm telling you. What I'd like you to do is Google. You can use Google. You don't have to listen to your teachers. You don't have to listen to the media or the government. Um, the people benefiting from the carbon trading schemes that are presently out there, financial schemes, are the people that are actually polluting the planet. <laughs> and the pollution out there is not generally CO2, but it's all sorts of terrible emissions and um, drastically bad effects on the waterways and our, our water and our rivers and our forests and, and our, our plant life and everything else. So. There's lots of bad things happening in the world, but I don't personally believe it's the emissions of carbon dioxide. And um, I don't like seeing you putting signs up that say carbon pollution because it's not pollution. Um, in fact, as the world warms, um, carbon dioxide levels rise, but so do water vapour. And water vapour's probably one of the um, biggest um, <coughs> drivers of, of global temperatures because it's, it stops the heat, it, it keeps the heat in. So it's a greenhouse gas. The biggest greenhouse gas is water vapour, not carbon dioxide. Um, I suppose all I'm doing is ranting at four in the morning to the kids and to people out there to, to, to educate yourselves um, on what the real truths are. And I think the government is promoting this. And just a bit of background. Um, when I was first a bit unsure of this, I started studying this about 20 years ago. So I suppose I'm a little bit of an old hand and I could talk about the science of how much emissions, I mean, Australia's emissions are 0.03%. I mean, we really, you could shut Australia down tomorrow, freeze to death and do nothing, and really we're not going to affect global temperatures if they were driven by carbon dioxide. Once again, I argue that's not the case. <coughs> Excuse me, coughing, I'm, because I've been crook, I'm trying to give up smoke, and it's made me worse. Um, don't smoke, kids, don't smoke. That puts off carbon dioxide too. Probably, probably should start talking about how much we breathe and... Uh, God. I'm just going to go off the planet here. Um, there's there's a lot of things wrong in the world, but generally they're driven by the wrong people. So the governments that are telling you what to do um, are, are financed by um, big business or big multinational companies. The big multinational companies generally are the ones polluting the world, and uh, they have a lot of say. And big oil um, and um, has had a massive say in that for a long, long time. They haven't wanted hemp-based resolutions, they haven't wanted to um, have electric cars. Um, <clears throat> electric cars started in the early 1900s and uh, people like Henry Ford and Rudolf Diesel were leaders and engineers that if they, if we had listened to them and big um, companies hadn't jumped all over them, we'd probably be driving around in, in, in vehicles that were re recyclable, stronger than steel. We wouldn't be digging up the iron ore, we wouldn't be 
cutting down the old growth forest, we'd be growing our own forest of hemp. I mean, there's a million ways we could go, but I'd like you to all become educated on that and sit at home and, and Google these things. I, I've met with, I've read the IPCC reports, the short report. Um, I, I've met with scientists that were part of the original United Nations IPCC reports, which were the initial people to say that global warming was happening. I met those scientists, they weren't happy with the outcomes. Um, the science is not settled, even the people that were part of that didn't believe it. Um, I have a friend that writes the reports for the IPCC, um, that's the United Nations, <clears throat> and that's the reports that, are ba that you know, you're basing what you're saying, and, and they don't believe it either. Um, and so a lot of information is being misled, and if you go back to the beginning of this 20 years ago, you'll see all sorts of reports that um, oceans would rise and this, that and the other, well they haven't. So do some research kids, um, don't listen to me, don't listen to your teacher and try and do something a little bit different with your lives and become educated.